All right, let's do XRP dash Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. I'm going to whiz through these four. Try to keep this under 15 minutes. Let's check out the price action of these monetary coins. I like monetary coins because they are not blockchain businesses dependent on founders and continue releasing news or news of potential news, things to that effect. I'm personally a big fan of monetary coins, so I'm going to start covering these four together regularly. And right now, more importantly, each of these four is behaving very similarly per its daily 200 EMA, which is an incredibly powerful EMA for any type of coin. And I think that at this time, each of these four could be at pretty nice uh, steady support price levels before a move off. So let's dive into these and let's take a look. But before we get going, uh, like for me, stop what you're doing, even if you're driving, pull over. And if you're driving, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. Smash like, punch it in the face, flip it off, whatever you got to do. And also leave me a quick comment, even if it's LOL, you suck or quack or whatever. Or hey, when are you going to cover B Pro? Whatever the case, uh, it's going to help me continue making videos for you. So it's going to help the algo. And I, I typically go back, if your comment doesn't doesn't uh, show up, I will have to approve it and then you'll see it the next day and I'll give it a like or a love or whatever it is. And then also uh, newer folks, here's what my channel does for you. Just real briefly, you're getting two of three points in the information triangle that you need to be getting within your crypto YouTube journey. You're getting project fundamentals and news-based sources. However, what my channel does from an altcoin perspective and always keeping Bitcoin and Ethereum within context of that, because I cover a lot of altcoins is, I help you make charts not foreign to you when you look at them. And that's going to help convert you from a buyer and prayer who watches your gains come all the way back down into a profit pimp. So by specifically allowing you to feel more comfortable when you're clicking around with your money and you feel that you have a statistical edge because you understand when you have a statistical edge, that's what I do for you. And watch through the video. If you like what you see here, uh, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and hit the bell and feel free to check out the links to the private gated community in the description section below. Let's get after it. All right. So I have drawn in the daily 200 here. So I can take off all the EMAs. I've already drawn it in. So actually, let's see how well I drew this. Let's put on the daily 200. And yes, that, there she be. All right, so this is the daily 200. So now I can switch time frames. I can go to the five day, I can go to the weekly or whatever, and it's still there, right? Okay, so right now I'm on the five day chart. And all we're doing right here is we are looking at price and how it behaves with the daily 200. So when you, as you can see, it once, once any price really of any asset, doesn't matter if it's black market testicles, doesn't matter. Once it dips below and uses this as resistance, it typically stays resistance for quite a while. All right. Now, and that, how long did, um, how long did, uh, how long did it stay under there? Almost a thousand days, right? Okay. So now check this out. Now, since July of last year, okay, XRP came above it, used it as support, got a big pop, overcorrected below the daily 200 or the orange eye. Let's zoom in. Uh, let me do that one more time. So here is like the, the um, uh, essentially, if you have a lever, like a, just imagine this like a piece of wood on here, right? And you're trying to balance or, or you're trying to like lift up a rock or whatever. This is the fulcrum, right? So this is essentially like the fulcrum of a lever. Very, very pivotal point. And this point was sealed in time as the fulcrum part, especially after this dip down. But after it came above, use it as support. I mean, this is weeks and weeks and like this is weeks of support here. And it proved it over and over. And this is a hyper volatile point. So that was um, just under 100 days, uh, just under 80 days, about 70 days. It used it as perfect support. And, and, and XRP essentially became a stable coin here. This is a hyper volatile asset. So this this um, lack of volatility while writing the daily 200, that essentially sealed the deal that, hey, I'm now going, going to use this as support. I proved it for 70 days. I became a stable coin, even though I'm one of the most volatile assets out there. And kablam, uh, we, this is a pivotal moment for us, especially uh, it's, it's that is essentially sealing in time. This was a pivotal point, but it's not confirmed until this happened. All right, so we have that situation happen. So any pop below, typically until the bull run is over, is going to be an excellent time to get it. Or, or since we've already had support once, blew past it. So let's count that as twice, three times, four times, five times. It seems like it's ready for a big move up. 
it seems like it's ready. Five times hitting this and making, um, besides with this, so I guess I have to count this as the first one. One higher low, two higher lows, three higher lows, four higher lows, and then lack of volatility. This thing is really, it. this, this seems like it's steamed uh, from a charting perspective, not even with news. And as most of you know, especially if you're watching this as an XRP Army fan, like there's potentially some pretty big news coming out and it's from a charting perspective it is ready to fly it is ready now is it going to fly tomorrow or the next week or will it fly you know even before bitcoin is 80k i i don't know the answer however the idea is from a strict charting perspective should that news based stimulus for bringing buyers to the market for XRP should that news based stimulus uh, create a, a mania of buying XRP, the chart supports it so that it doesn't have to come crashing back down, probably get a 50% correction after a big pop. However, it doesn't have to come way back below the daily 200 or even close to it because it's already been supported. You got five, five uh, rechecks of it, five retests of this. I mean, writing it five times is a big deal. Now, the last time before a big pump, XRP did stay, and this is about when I got in crypto. I was uh, accumulating XRP around like uh, 18, 19 cents, stuff like that. Um, I sold way too early. <laughs> I thought like uh, 80 cents was going to be it. And uh, yeah, I got out a little early. But anyway, but I, I made a lot of money on that one. That was a good one. Uh, that was my first intro to crypto, <laughs> getting XRP. And then bam, I only had to wait a couple of months for a, a pretty big increase there, like 3x my money. I was pretty impressed. But anyway, so it could do something like this. And so it, it and it's going to likely depend on that, you know, SEC and everything just being clear and it's in the clear. It, it could take a while. So um, XRP could behave like this until that happens. So let's say, you know, it takes um, this whole time. XRP could move like this for a while. It could and it could have dips down back below a dollar easily. You know, let's say let's say the stimulus for uh, flying up doesn't happen until uh, doesn't happen until January. Well, Bitcoin's likely going to have a decent correction before January, and that would be uh, XRP coming back below a dollar, right? It, it can easily happen, and still, what I'm saying about the coin in terms of being ready it would still be uh, in play, because this is XRP has already moved this way before a big pop. It could easily move that way again. Now. There are more players in the market with XRP. I don't know if it's going to move precisely the same, but it has happened. It could happen again. And uh, that's what I'm seeing with XRP. So it's from a charting perspective, XRP is so volatile, so crazy. It is hard to make accurate predictions on this because it's so hyper volatile. Um, so the main point of this is the charting perspective supports the idea of a monstrous blast up at any time that that new stimulus uh, creates that. I mean, it looks, it looks good. And within that idea, you could easily have XRP revisit like 85 cents easily, and it's still good. So in terms of playing around with leverage on this coin, I mean, it's a tough coin. I mean, you have to set stops really tightly and, uh, you know, expect to re-enter stuff uh, multiple times because this moves real fast in both directions. So I'm not saying go all in, only going to 5x leverage. Definitely not saying that. This, this asset is way too volatile. So like buy and pray uh, and just like look at your liquidation price because you're probably going to liquidate <laughs> if you're uh, that type of person. The timing is going to be impossible to know. But it does look very, very, very healthy. Um, it, it honestly looks fantastic right now. So let's uh, let's move on to Dash. All right. One thing to note on Dash is that let's put on weekly ribbon short term. Okay. So I have what I call short term uh, weekly ribbons on here. It's still in a downtrend. However, and it looked like it was making higher lows. I really was getting bullish on Dash about right here. I thought these ribbons were going to flip because once they flip, Dash starts making some serious gains on Bitcoin historically. So zooming right into here, they really, really looked like they want to flip. They wanted to flip. And it looked like these were higher lows. However, it looks like one low, higher low. It looked This looks like a compelling higher low. So the idea that Dash will finally catch up to the rest of the market with this higher low, it looks like, a you know, within the realm of crypto, which is an extremely risky asset class, this looks compelling. This looks like a compelling higher low to me because it's already given one effort to flip these ribbons, which is really hard to do. 
creating a nice higher low it you know it might bounce around here for a while but i think this next push up um over the next couple months it could flip these ribbons and that would that would really catapult um dash price uh this is a this is a pretty nice higher low um so but then again it could be price discovery down versus bitcoin it absolutely could be it could it could make a new lower low now uh from a uh dash perspective versus big or not versus bitcoin versus the dollar okay just look when these ribbons let's take off price even when these ribbons flip up and stay flipped up that's when stuff really starts moving right so and before you get the sustained flip guess what happens a couple tries so let me zoom in here watch look how it tried once and it tried twice here right see that and then when it flipped it really raced Okay, so now versus Bitcoin, let's say, okay, that looked like a, a good try for higher low. Well, look how many times it's tried it. Once, twice, three times, four times, and now it came back up. It's consolidating. This looks, this looks like it could be the push that is the final, like, I'm not flipping back down. So flip means, um, let me make sure. So when green is on bottom and red is on top, okay. To flip means you get your green back on top. So when everything's in order with the green on top, red on bottom, it's in order. That's a bullish move, right? So that's what I mean by flip. Um, and so let's zoom in. So just know that how many times it's tried to get above. And this was a big try. This was a big one. And it reflipped almost all the way back down. It's consolidating. And a lot of my community knows how I use the ribbons that I developed here. Um, I guess EMA ribbons. Uh, my, my, my custom EMA ribbons, I guess, when you see consolidation of ribbons, especially after multiple tries to flip, that's often a heck of a time, uh, to get, to get into a trade. Now, what type of trade that depends if you're day trading, I mean, probably not because this is a weekly scale, but from a longer term hold perspective, uh, and this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. We're absolutely talking about Dash Pokemon cards. That's what we do here. Uh, we talk about Pokemon cards with uh, different uh, names on them, and this one is named Dash. Uh, just even the ribbons and every, everything is supporting the idea that this is uh, ready to catch up with the rest of the market. And so let's take the ribbons off, look at price. Dash is extremely suppressed. Okay. Dash is extremely suppressed. It is at the bottom of its origin line chart. It is at the bottom. The bottom. It's got a long way to go. And I, I, I made these lines myself. So you can't just like have trading view put these in for you. So it connects a lot of uh it connects a lot of tops and bottoms, and that's how I developed those. And they're all parallel. And it seems the way just how crypto moves. It is at the bottom of its chart. So there's just evidence after evidence after evidence that this simply will catch up at some point. Um, so that's what this chart says. This is going to catch up at some point. And what did Dash do back here? It caught up at some point. And the ribbons that I just showed you are indicating that moment might be any week now that it starts moving up. So I am honestly hyper bullish on Dash. I have been a little bit prematurely, as I showed you when I thought um, uh, it was making very compelling uh, higher lows uh, versus Bitcoin. I got bullish starting then, and then obviously it came back down uh, versus Bitcoin when Bitcoin's aggressive moves up. But it looks like now is, is even more probable to be that time. So, you know, price targets for Dash, I mean, it's each of these lines, really, that's how I'm going to trade. And if you're in the community, I can, you know, I provide these lines. Uh, so you can also just, if you wanted to swing trade, these lines are your swing trade lines, essentially. So you don't have to be buying and selling every day. It's just like, you know, really what I'm looking for, I, I'm looking for uh, two sell points. Um, and I probably won't even 100 bag, 100 bag means sell all of it. I, I'm talking like 20 bag uh, type of opportunities, maybe up to like uh, 30 bag. Because uh, this is one of my larger HODL positions. So this Dash, I treat Dash as my Bitcoin, right? Because uh, I believe, um, even though it would have been a better play to use Bitcoin as Bitcoin, and once it flew, then I uh, get Dash. But that's, in, you know, um, with the idea that uh, Bitcoin will perform uh, much better than other monetary coins for the first half of the bull run. And then sell that when you think the bull runs half over and then move into your other monetary coins because they're going to catch up. That would have been a better play. However, I've been in a dash for a bit. I've been accumulating and it's essentially my Bitcoin. So am I personally biased? I'm trying not to. Um, I'm trying to remove what I want to happen from what the charts are saying. So I want to be very, very clear with that. 
and the charts, I think, with even, I think I have zero buys here. It seems that charts are saying the time is real, real, real close where this makes a move similar to here. It looks close, folks. It looks close. All right. So, um, so this is more of a long-term analysis. And then, um, you know, as things, as I make these videos, I'll do more short-term analysis. So let's go on to Litecoin. And let's, uh, let's choose a different Litecoin chart. There we go. All right, so let's put on the daily 200 and take a look at how this is reacting to it. I'll keep on the 10 as well, just so we can look at mo current momentum. Based off the daily 200, exploded. Fell below and used it as resistance, bad, right? Came back, big try above, couldn't sustain it. Another try, couldn't sustain it. Another try, sort of based off of it. So it, so when you consolidate just under a very important EMA, as you're losing volatility, that's typically good. That's a good sign. When you're, when you're going from here and your oscillations become slower and slower and slower, that is the same as those weekly ribbons all consolidating similar to how they're doing on Dash. So I bet if I put on the weekly ribbons here, they were consolidating and smashed into each other there. Um, I, I, I'm betting, right? And I think that's kind of where Dash is right now, equivalent. Because it hasn't gotten a sustained push above similar to how Litecoin has now. So let's put on the weekly ribbons and take a look. See? Let's zoom way in there. That point, look. It tried to get above after a couple attempts prior, right? Smashed. And that's exactly how Dash is set up. It's the same setup. It is the same thing. Particular to it's not its first attempt. Like it's Dash's third or fourth attempt to, to flip these. And now they're smashed. And it looks like it's getting ready to have that massive move. So Litecoin has already had one massive move. And it also reflipped, almost completely reflipped. And it's smashed. So let's take off price. So see how it's smashed here? Look. They're getting consolidated again, right? And when you, so you know that pressure is building up when they're consolidated. Now, look at the daily 200 with the 10 only. So the 10 is for momentum. What is the short-term direction? It's angled up. So it looks like it's done retesting this. It, it flew above the daily 200, flew above, overcorrected, went back above, went back below, use it and it's consolidating right above it. It could have one more dip down, could make a nice third higher low, you know, so, so the uh, oscillations get lower and lower. However, with Bitcoin and Ethereum doing what they're doing, this, it might not need one more oscillation. This might be it to where it makes a new higher local high and uh, flies past 400 bucks. It looks pretty ready, and the weekly ribbons are supporting that. It doesn't need to make a. It doesn't need to. It easily could, and the ribbons would stay still smashed, especially if this were to happen within one week, right? One week come down, you know, seven days, and then it really takes off. That could easily happen, and that could align with a Bitcoin correction after Bitcoin hits like 64, 65k, and that could happen this week easily. It, it honestly looks like that's what's going to happen. So, um, so Litecoin could make one more higher low at the bot below its daily 200. That could easily happen. However, it's there is strong support um, in the market right now that 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 could have been it. This this support on top is all it needed. And that that was the end of the oscillation, smashing all the EMA ribbons and bam, it looks pretty ready to me. With the threat of one more higher low in play that could easily happen. So Litecoin honestly is looking pretty charged uh, to, to giddy up here and um, and seal the deal on locking in all time highs. So it came up and kissed its all-time high, overcorrected per the daily 200, came back above, and it looks it looks ready to charge. It, it really, really does. So yeah, these monetary coins, I'm just looking my chops here, uh, and and uh, I don't know, they're, they're looking good, and they're all positioned pretty similarly versus the daily 200. Look again, look again here, Bitcoin Cash. What did it do? It flew above. It's daily 200, overcorrected, went below, came back above, went back below, consolidating on top. Exactly, exactly like Dash and Litecoin. And XRP is right here too. They're all four doing the same thing.
And again, each of these four is at risk. If Bitcoin has a quick correction, they're going to make a higher low below their daily 200 again. And when that happens, that trend line right there could end up being one heck of a buy. And if so, for example, I'm in um, le personally, I'm in leverage, uh, very mildly leveraged longs. I'm looking for a longer hold on these, but um, I'm in those. So I would with the idea that it is each of these is at threat to make one more higher low roughly on the, about the same darn trend line. Each of these four would be below the daily 200, which XRP would be like 86 cents if that were to happen. Um, so I would allow myself to get stopped out. And then I would, if, if I were stopped out, I would probably wait to, uh, re-enter here. It could get tricky where it makes a higher low way up here, but I would try, I would be compelled to see if, um, if it would come down here to this line and that would be Bitcoin cash closer to 500 bucks, 510 bucks or so. Um, so just warning, you know, I'm not saying so that, that is your that strong warning for anybody. Like, oh, I'm going all in. I mean, well, there's a strong threat that that could happen because it could align with Bitcoin correcting and Bitcoin is, you know, fairly due for a correction. But if Bitcoin makes one more pump and this just, you know, just doesn't do much, it's still a threat of doing that. Right. So while Bitcoin makes its next pump like this needs to make a new local higher high. And if it doesn't do that in Bitcoin's, you know, final pump before a correction, it's probably going to hit this trend line. So just be very, very aware in these four assets. If these four assets, so in summary, like the most important point, if these four assets cannot make a higher local high before Bitcoin corrects, they're probably each going to go back below their daily 200 and hit a roughly hit close to a trend line of that third higher low. Does that make sense? All right. So if you liked what you saw here today and you're new, smash subscribe, punch it in the face, hit the bell so you can stay in the know, and just know that the future uh, altcoin videos on these four monetary coins that I make, it'll likely involve a little bit more um, in-depth of the short-term price action so we can know today, tomorrow type of stuff, or next week, all that good stuff. And y'all just got Timothy.